Good evening. So bizarre. <laughs> a couple, two years ago, I started hearing some um, radio ads about this person, Dr. Josh on Bewell, um, that said that he was working with digestive issues um, in kids if they had a hard time pooping. Um, I love talking about poop. It's amazing. And uh, we were struggling with our daughter who could go for several days, sometimes even a full week without having a bowel movement. So I was like, well, let's just give this a shot and see what happens. She was five at the time, took her in for her first appointment, um, and instantly we made it home and she was right into the bathroom. And I was like, what is this? This is amazing. Um, but to rewind a bit with her, because there's always a history with any kind of problems that we have, and this is partly why we seek out chiropractic care. Um, she was a planned horrendous pregnancy. Um, I was sick for the full nine months. I lived off of Coke and chicken sandwiches from McDonald's. She came into this world um, ready to be born at 2 a.m. and decided to not be born um, at the birthing center. She wanted us to drive ourselves to the hospital from the birthing center the following, um, well, I don't even know, it was the following day. It was ridiculous. And she would not come out. <laughs> and I was scared. Um, I did a lot of yelling. My husband was insanely patient with me. When she finally did pop out, um, she was flat-backed. She would not turn on her side. And if anyone knows about the birthing process, babies are supposed to turn onto their side and slide out sideways because that's kind of how we're built. And she was flat on her back and slid out and was nine pounds, three ounces. A lover. I considered myself a pretty okay mom. I am a knew what to expect with an infant because I'd had two other children. It seems sometimes like it didn't matter what we did. She was unhappy. She was cranky. Um, I, by day three, I could not feed her. My goal, she was going to be my last baby because I was turning 40 and I was having no more children. And I refused to have children after I was 40. She refused to eat. Um, she wouldn't eat on one side. I could hold her on the other side and she would be completely fine. She would not take a bottle. Um, there were just a lot of things. She couldn't sleep for more than an hour, possibly. Um, she woke up... Uh, all the time during the night, crying. And it, oh, if we held her, then she was totally fine. And I thought, great, I have a co-sleeper. I don't want to have a co-sleeper. I want to be able to sleep in my own bed without somebody next to me um, that's tiny and little and all of those things. My lactation consultant recommended that I take her to a chiropractor. Unfortunately, Dr. Josh was not um, open at that time because he hadn't started his practice, I believe. So I took her to um, a friend of mine, and she started to um, do some manipulations and adjustments on her. Um, lined her right back up, and she instantly was able to start feeding on both sides, was sleeping longer through the night and having great regular bowel movements. That lasted for a few months, and then just life happened, and we had to kind of stop. So roll forward again five years, six years, and um, I'm signing her up to take her to go see Dr. Josh. Her sleep improved immensely. She is our kid who would get up several times during the night, and by the age of four, I thought to myself, why... Why did I? Why did we choose to have a child? Like I, I, I miss my sleep. Like I'm, I was cranky all the time because I could not sleep. My husband is never cranky. He, if he is, he never shows it. He's this perfectly gentle, beautiful giant. Um, but it was wearing us down. Like she was, she was wearing us down. Our pediatrician was saying, "Do these things to help." Um, once we started the chiropractic care, the sleeping improved. The digestion improved. Um, not to say that it's 100% perfect because we as parents don't always do um, the dietary needs that she needs. And so we have to find that balance. But it is a guarantee that when she goes to see Dr. Josh, we are always guaranteed a smooth sailing in the bathroom, if not an hour after we get home, but definitely by the next day. And she is a much happier, um, more energetic child because of that. And for us, that's a saving grace. So we went to um, have one of her scans done. And I wish I could remember exactly what Dr. Josh had said to us because it was an instant of, Chad and I looked at each other and we were like, Dawson needs this. This is what Dawson needs. My son just turned 18 in September. He was a beautiful baby, a beautiful pregnancy, a beautiful toddler, a beautiful elementary school kid. 
he turned 12 and something drastically happened and changed in him. He was not my happy-go-lucky, wake-up-in-the-morning smiling kid anymore. Um, he was still very kind. I still don't know. We will never know what was the cause. When my son was born, um, I woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning, instantly went into labor. My, my water broke. He was born at 5.20. We had enough time to drive from Peters Creek into Anchorage, um, I had a natural, beautiful water birth. He was seven pounds, eight ounces. Um, the happiest baby. He slept through the night. There was like maybe on one hand, I could count how many times he woke up in the middle of the night his first year and a half. He was perfect. I said, if, I joked that if he was my first child, I probably would have had like 18 more kids. Um, but he, he literally was, he was happy. He went to anybody. He would walk up to strangers in the store. I called him my milk carton baby. I was like, he's going to be my child that I'm going to have to put a picture of on a milk carton because he just would go to anyone. Everyone loved him. Um, as he got a little bit older, I noticed he wasn't crawling. He was army crawling. Um, fortunately, I worked in elementary, I work in elementary education, so I knew that early childhood development and the milestones and things that were supposed to happen. He was not talking. Um, he wasn't even saying basic mama, dada, those kinds of things. He, um, when he finally did start to walk because I forced him to walk, um, he was about 19 months old. I reached out to a local group and said, I need some help with my child because I'm not sure what's going on with him. Um, I know what is happening is not normal. They did a lot of in-home interventions with him. Um, they worked on him with speech because everything to him was more. He could say the word more. He'd go to the fridge and hit the fridge and say more. And I'd open the fridge and I'd say, do you want water? Do you want fruit? More. That's all he would say. It was very hard to navigate him. We tried picture cards. He'd point to picture cards. Everything was more. I'm like, what is wrong with him? I finally went and got him diagnosed um, he did have autism, and I say he did have it. Um, we all know that we all have a little piece of autism in us. It's just how we function. The autism scale is huge. He was diagnosed at a super low scale of a seven, which had its pros and its cons because I, like Trudy was like, I was fearful. I was like, oh my gosh, what does this mean for us? How's he gonna function? Like all these kinds of things started going through my mind. I got him into a special education preschool with the school district. Um, he went there for three years before he started kindergarten. When he started kindergarten, he still wasn't really talking. Um, there was speech involvement. There was all kinds of learning disabilities. He was cognitively slow. Um, it takes him a really long time. We roll forward, but he's happy. He's kind. He's helpful. Um, he has younger siblings from his dad's side. I never worried about leaving him home alone. I never, like, he's my, he's a beautiful, beautiful child. And then we roll into he's 12 years old, and then he does a flip of a 180, and I'm like, I, I don't know where my child has gone. What has happened? Um, and I was like, well, this is awesome. Welcome to the teenage years. Okay. Uh, but I don't know where my happy, like, wake up every morning with a big smile on my face kid went. It was wake up in the morning and... <clears throat> It literally was living with a caveman. It was very frustrating. And I didn't know how to navigate that. Had no clue. When he was 14, 15 years old, um, he was in high school. I got a phone call from the school when I was at work letting me know that I needed to come to the school because they had him in the office with them because he had told a friend that he wanted to kill himself and that he had almost killed himself the night before. Now, he was a very quiet child, didn't really talk a whole lot, tried to have conversations with him, and he wouldn't say anything. He'd just kind of look at you and be like, mm, whatever, very sullen. Um, my world was rocked that day simply because the year before, it, almost exactly to the day, I had a friend of mine whose son had committed suicide. He had just turned 18 years old. And watching their family try to navigate that destroyed them. We showed up. We had our conversation. We had to take him to an intake. We were just trying to figure out what do you, like, what do, you do with your child when they want to end their life. As a parent, I right now in my life experiences, I don't know what could be possibly worse than that. I, I stayed home for three days with him. I was like, do I lock up the knives? Do I, like, you know, all of our guns and things are empty and taken away. Like, I, I was afraid to, for him to go to bed at night. 
because I was afraid that I would wake up the next morning and he wouldn't be awake. And when we had taken Ren to see Dr. Josh, and he talked about how chiropractic care can help the mental status of people and how the neurons are connected to the nerves and the spine, and it's all intertwined together, we instantly were like, we have to get him and see what this is all about, if this is going to work. My child, our child, um, went from a very sullen, sulky kid to more smiles, outgoing. Um, he started a little over a year ago seeing Dr. Josh. He's much happier now. It's not a 100% perfect cure. We do have him on some antipsychotic medication simply for the fact that he needs a little bit of assistance with that because he has a big history of genetic things from his father's side, um, just from in utero as he was developing and then the first two and a half years of his life, which was not a very um, stable environment. And when Dr. Josh talks about being the hope dealer, and at first I was like, oh yeah, what kind of deal are you doing? Like, what kind of hope are you giving out? Um, I can truly say now, it's one of those things where he took a family who was pretty much in a lockdown and afraid, afraid to leave their child alone because they weren't sure what they were going to come home to. To now I have full confidence. Tonight he's at home with his little sister who's sick. Um, he has a friend over. He went and got picked up from school today by Chad. He opened the door. He was happy. He was smiling. Um, he has conversations with us. It went from not sure how to express his feelings or his words to now he opens up to us. He communicates with us. Um, like Trudy said, her son just all of a sudden just says a full sentence. And we're like, what, like, what is happening to him? Because it's the constant care that he is getting. And aside from the medical side of it, I don't know of anyone else in the community who would be a more positive adult role model on the medical side. As soon as he walks in that door, we call them the girls. The girls are always so happy and positive and joking with him and asking about school or about a girlfriend or about like what happened. Um, Dr. Josh has this thing where he always says like, tell me something good that happened. Like what's something good? For the first couple of weeks, he wouldn't say anything. He's like, well, I don't know. Now it's pretty much a, hey, I know what I'm gonna tell Dr. Josh today when he asks me what's good. It's huge. It's huge. They've made this, con he's made this connection with their office um, that goes beyond just showing up to get adjusted. He takes it literally into his heart and the same thing. He'll ask if I don't write down when the appointments are on the calendar, he will ask me, do I have an adjustment this week? It's almost like he's excited to go. He's excited to see everybody. So we have noticed that we've gone from this, like I said, this very sullen, um, lonely child uh, to somebody who literally his life has been saved um, because of the chiropractic care. Um, and I, Dr. Rush has lots of great things he's probably going to talk about later, just explain how all of that works. But um, I'm here to say that I have two children who are completely different with completely different reasons as to why they went. And it's working. It's, it's working for them. Um, and beyond a shadow of a doubt, I just, like, he's my hope dealer because he delivered the hope, um, and, and it's working. So thank you for that.